next couple of verses are concerned with the realms of existence. And this might sound quite interesting, quite fanciful even. But I'm recording this video shortly after news. And the news has been reporting the death of the comedian and actor Robin Williams. So there's a lot of talk of depression in the news at the moment. And it seems to be something many people can relate to. But this is actually one of the realms of existence. Depression is one of the realms of existence which we can find ourselves in. So I, I just want to mention this and perhaps address it after I've read out the verses. So verse 844 With the pleasant touches of the gods and the harassings of the hells if it were not for the middle existence no vijnanas would ever evolve. So the key phrase here is the evolving of vijnanas. I think what I'll do is read the next verse before coming back to that. The next verse talks about the different kinds of sentient beings and the ancient classification was within particular understanding of where sentient beings come from. So I'll just read out the list. Verse 845 It should be known that the womb born, the egg born, the moisture born and other various bodies of sentient beings are born of the middle existence and descend into the paths of existence, into the six paths of existence. So these two verses are looking at our situation. No matter how we were born, from the womb, from an egg, moisture born. This is a classification I'm not sure about, but I think it's the idea that things can arise with this moisture. And the middle existence is the human realm. The human realm lies between the heavens and the hells. The human realm lies between the heavens and the hells. So let's look back at verse 844. The pleasant touches of the gods and the harassings of the hells. These are talking about intense experiences. You can have intensely positive experiences. I think some people understand or confuse these with spiritual experiences. Spiritual experience relates to equanimity. Sometimes when you tap sources of inner bliss, you think you found it. You think you found it. And it's very nice, especially if you haven't had much bliss in your life. But we must be careful not to get lost in it. I've often said that positive experiences can be harder to deal with than negative experiences. That is from a spiritual point of view, from the point of view of spiritual practice. The thing about intense experiences, intense experiences of pleasure, intense experiences of pain is that you don't reflect. You don't reflect. It's in the middle existence, the human existence, that you have some ability to reflect and to step back from these experiences. And I think that's what's meant by the evolving of the vijnanas. The vijnanas can be understood as our sense impressions awareness of sense of impressions. Back in verse 519, we are told that those who are equipped with a noble insight and are thoroughly conversant with the suchness of reality know well how to turn over ideas and reach the other shore of the vijnana. 
So I think reaching the other, other shore of Vijnana is the same here as the evolution of the Vijnanas, is how we move on from them. And this isn't possible when you're in huge physical or emotional pain. It isn't possible when you're thriving, when you are loving life to the max. In both cases, you are right out there. You are right out there in the world. So we come back to the human realm. There are other realms which are part of the middle existence and which perhaps aren't as extreme as the hell and heavenly realms. There's the animal realm and there's the realm of the hungry ghosts. There's also the realm of the titans, but they're kind of up there with the gods. The realm of the hungry ghosts and the realm of the animals Although the hungry ghost sounds pretty hellish, it does seem to be part of the middle existence. In a way, the hungry ghosts and the animals are aspects of human behaviour. The hungry ghosts can never get enough, they're never satisfied. The animals are concerned with basic survival instincts. Well, they're focused on basic survival, they don't see anything beyond that. But the hungry ghosts, it's quite important not to get judgmental here, we're just observing. They can never be happy because they can never get enough. There's always this feeling of lack, which actually is quite an honest state of affairs. You can never be satisfied with what the world has got to offer. And it's very hard to get this message. Or is it? People often get into religion because they realise that the world hasn't got much to offer. So they concoct stories of an afterlife, of a future life, and start focusing on that. That's one way of responding to the realisation that life has got nothing to offer. And I suppose as long as you're not hurting anybody else, that's okay from a relative point of view. From a spiritual point of view, it's completely useless. But I'm wondering about this depression thing again. I'm thinking of Robin Williams who had had as far as most of us concerned, he had everything. But it wasn't enough. He had success, he had fame, he had money. Although there are stories that perhaps he had financial problems, but he must have had plenty of money by most people's standards. And there were many people that loved him. Not just his fans, but his family. He had people close to him, family and friends. But all of that left, it leaves this, well, what we call depression, un untouched. It doesn't affect this dark abyss that you feel yourself teetering into. You know, I sometimes wondered if I've been depressed. I mean, there have been times, especially when I was younger, that uh, it actually seemed quite stupid to carry on living. You only carry on living if you haven't got a clue. Any sane person would kill themselves. I mean, this, this is how it seemed to me at one time. And I suspect this is probably how depressed people, people who are on the brink, they see it this way as well. You're actually deluded if you think life is worth living. So I think this is the voice of depression. And 
I must say it's not a way of thinking that I've entertained for the later years of my adult life. My own feeling is you'll be dead soon enough. So let's just see what life throws up. <laughs> yeah, you'll be dead soon enough. But it is like you have this demon, this demon at your heels. And when you're in the hell realm, you are caught up in the maw of this demon. But if you're in the human realm, then you have a chance of looking at this demon. And as soon as you've got this chance of looking at the demon, then you're independent of it. You are touching your independence of this demon. And Perhaps this is what got me thinking about it. I put on the radio this morning and there was a talk. There was a talk by a Buddhist. It's actually somebody that I've had some contact with on Facebook. He does these semi-regular talks on a talk radio show here. And he was talking about depression as well and how mindfulness Mindfulness has something to offer here, the practice of mindfulness. It's certainly a start. And these teachings that are presented in the Lankavatara Sutra take us much, much more deeply into understanding and into freedom. So this is actually the point I want to stress here. These teachings can seem quiet quite a nice exercise, a nice space to indulge ourselves in in a certain way. But the fact is they are dealing with some of the most difficult aspects of life. It's very easy to dismiss the teachings and I have a tendency to do it myself. We have a way of compartmentalizing Buddhism, Lankavatara Sutra, Guru Gilis. That's all fine, but I have my life to get on with. All of this, the teachings, are addressing this life that we want to get on with. And from contact I've had with some of you, I suspect you're having to deal with some very deep, difficult and troubling issues. And I hope that these videos and these teachings give you a space which provides you with some relief from this provide you with some perspective on these deeply troubling demons which are biting at your heel. And I've, I've talked about some of my own challenges during the course of the last couple of years in which I've been doing this particular series of videos. I'd just like to end on a more up upbeat note in that in recent, I suppose recent weeks, recent months, I've been experiencing the challenge of having to deal with some very positive states. I've been experiencing the pleasant touches of the gods. And I suppose the point here is The deepest feelings of depression are never permanent. It seems that way at the time. 
it's possible to shift from hell to heaven but our greatest opportunity is in being human and being able to practice mindfulness being able to realize once again the nature of this mindfulness the nature of awareness and the sense of release from this whole cycle of up and down happy and depressed birth and death 